law of partial pressures. This is such a basic idea. What Dalton's law basically says is, let's say that you have a tank and inside of this tank, you've got some hydrogen and you find out that it's 300 kilopascals of hydrogen. And inside this tank, maybe we have some helium gas and you say that that's 600 kilopascals. And then you have another tank and I don't know, maybe you have some oxygen inside of that tank. And that is 450 kPa. Guess what happens when you add all three of them in together? You add it up to get the total. total. Awesome, that's all Dalton's Law basically says. Now, it does get a little bit more challenging, and so we'll talk about Dalton's Law. We'll come back a little bit later and talk another day about Dalton's Law and how does it get a little bit more challenging. Well, maybe they don't give you pressure. Maybe instead they give you grams of the gas, or maybe instead they give you moles of the gas. And so there are some other problems that will get um, to be a little bit more difficult, but the idea, the basic idea of Dalton's Law is super simple. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures is what this is called. So Dalton's Law basically just tells us that if you have the sum of the partial pressures, they all will add up to equal the total, total, total pressure. So circle that and circle the sum of the partial pressures. That may sound like common sense to you, but that really is all that Dalton's Law is. So as simple as it may sound, it's actually one of the most useful of the gas laws in real life. So I'll tell you about some applications and how it ends up working here too. So this is just showing an equation where the total pressure is P1 plus P2 plus dot, 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 all the way up to however many pressures you have inside of the container. So let's take a look at this question here. And this says that you have a container that's full of a mixture of gases and the partial pressure of the oxygen is 101 kPa. And we've got hydrogen in there and that's 112 kPa. And then we have some nitrogen that's in there and that's at 88 kPa. And they wanna know what the total is. What do we do? Add we add them up. So we write that the total pressure is equal to the PO2, and this is a subscript, plus the PH2 plus the PN2. And so then I would just say that it's equal to 101 plus the 112 kPa plus the 88 kPa. And if we add this up, what do we get? 301 kPa. Perfect. Okay, so now the problem, it's not really that much more challenging, but what if they tell us what the total is? and then we're asked for one of the partial pressures. What do you have to do then? Subtract. Subtract, awesome, okay? So this question says, we have a mixture of oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen, and this 278 kPa is now representing what? The total, so this is my P tote. And it says, if the partial pressure of the oxygen and hydrogen are 112 and 101 kPa, respectively, what does it mean if it says respectively? In that order, awesome. So the 112 goes with the O2, and the 101 goes with the H2. And then it says, what's the partial pressure of just the nitrogen? So again, our total pressure is equal to the oxygen plus the hydrogen plus the nitrogen. And we know now that our total is 278 kPa, and that's equal to the 112 kPa plus the 101 kPa plus X which is my N2. So that's X, that's what I'm looking for. And similar to if I said 10 is equal to two plus five plus X, how would you solve for X? Subtract, you would say 10 minus two minus five equals? Three, three. perfect, okay? And so all you would do is just subtract the two. So some people will say, well, can I just add these and then subtract? That's fine. You just want to avoid any error in your calculator. And the easier thing to do to avoid the error, the error is to say 278 minus 112 minus 101. And what do we get? 65. 65. Perfect. The pressure of our N2 is equal to 65 kPa. Let's talk real quick about the sig figs. So typically with the sig figs, you would say three, 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 I need three in my answer, but that's only if you're multiplying and dividing. When you're adding and subtracting, the rules are different. What you do is you find out where your estimated number is, and that's in the ones place, that's in the ones place, that's in the ones place, guess where I wanna end my answer? Ones. In the ones place, okay? If there was one in the tenths place, or all of them were in the tenths place, and one was in the ones place, you would still stop in the ones place. You can't be as good as the tenths place if you're estimating the ones, okay? So we'll go through a couple more of these as we, um, as we do these two. Okay, so what's gonna happen right now is there's a question that I have, and we're gonna do this as a class, and my inquiry problem is, 
I need a certain amount of methane gas inside of a bottle. And I'm gonna show you what that bottle looks like in just a, a little bit here. And um, it's set at room temperature and pressure. And I wanna know how I can get that exact volume of methane inside of an empty bottle. And we're gonna end up brainstorming together and we're gonna come back in the video, we'll come back and we'll give you what our um, rationale and how it was that we figured this out. Okay, so we're gonna pause for just a minute here. Okay, so the question basically was, how can we fill this with methane gas? And what we ended up saying was, what we could do is, we could fill this with water, so fill the container with water, and then what do we do? Put it in water? Yep, we inverted it into another container of water. So we inverted it into a small trough of water. And then what do we do? Then we let the gas with the tube, we let the gas fill it. So we inverted it in there, it was filled with water. Since you've got water inside of water, the water level ended up staying the same. Why? Because we've created, and it starts with an E. We've started, we've created what? Equilibrium between the inside of the bottle and outside. the outside air. Awesome, perfect, okay? And so we inverted it in, and then we were able to um, put the hose into the bottom of the bottle and then what did the gas do when we turned on the gas when we turned the so methane gas the on air, the water it out. pushed the water out what word can we use it starts with a d displaced. we displace the water awesome and so we put the hose in and turned on turned it on displacing the water Okay, we displaced the water, and then once we got to a point where it was filled, then we know that it's now filled with the uh, methane gas. Okay, so this method is called collecting over water. It says a common method of gas collection in the lab involves doing what to the water? What did we say we wanted to do to the water? Displace. Displace it. Displacing water. Displacing water from a bottle so that you know when the bottle is full of an invisible gas. The gas that's left in the bottle will not be pure. We said that it wasn't pure. It's actually a mixture that contains the gas you trapped. And what else does it have inside of there? Water vapor. water vapor. Awesome. It also contains a certain amount of water vapor. To find the pressure of the dry gas alone, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract out the water vapor pressure. Okay? Because what we know is the total, which is the room pressure, has to be equal to both of those pressures added up together. So if you just want the pressure of the gas, you can just subtract the water vapor pressure. Well, the nice thing is that the scientists actually put together a chart, and this chart says vapor pressure of water, and how did they record the different vapor pressures of water? Temperature. At different temperatures. So depending on what the temperature is, you can figure out what the vapor pressure of the water was. So all we're gonna do is say that the total pressure, which typically would be your room or your atmosphere pressure, whatever the pressure is of your atmosphere, is equal to the dry gas, which usually is X, that's your unknown, that's the one you're typically looking for, plus the water vapor pressure, which we are going to get from this chart right here. Okay, that's all we have to do is just get it from the chart. Or you could use this equation, which just rearranges it to solve for the pressure of X. Okay, that's all you're doing is just rearranging it. So in order to solve the problem in a real life situation, you need a reference table, that's what this is. In the problems, you'll see that the vapor pressure may be given to you to save time. I want you to be able to use the chart. So you're gonna keep referencing this chart back again. So Q3 says, a sample of hydrogen gas is collected over water at 14 degrees Celsius. And the pressure of the resultant mixture is 113 kPa. So this here must be representing my total. This 113 kPa is representing my total. It says, what, what is the pressure that's exerted by just the hydrogen alone? So we just want to know what hydrogen's by itself is, okay? So we know the equation is the total is equal to the pressure in this case of the hydrogen, that's what our x is, plus what? The water's vapor pressure, awesome, okay? So the total we know is 113.0 kPa, and that's equal to the pressure by hydrogen, which is what we're looking for. How am I supposed to find out the pressure of the water? Look at the chart. Look at the chart. What does it tell us the temperature is? 14. 14. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this right here to find out right there that it's 1.6 kPa. 1.6 kPa. So how do I calculate the pressure of the hydrogen? Subtract. Awesome. What do we get when we subtract this? 
111.4 kPa. Awesome. Perfect. And that's it. Okay. So depending on what the type of problem is, if it tells you that it's collecting over water, just make sure that you come back and you take a look at the chart to figure out what that water vapor pressure is at that bottom temperature. And that's it for simple Dalton's Law of Pretzel Pressure.